Almost all historians agree that it is conservative, dynamic forces which build civilization, while it is liberal, exhausted forces that tear it down. This can be observed in every major civilization going far back into antiquity, up to our present day West. A key vector in understanding this process is the window that peers into the very soul of a culture. It is the inmost aspect of that culture's vitality and the universal perception of itself and the world in which it strives to comprehend. This window is art. In studying the artistic evolution of any particular civilization, one unravels the story arc of its history. In the beginning, there is a sense of awe, expectation, and mythic aspiration. At its apex, there is ethos, a fully realized ideal of beauty, and thematic motifs designed to inspire the onlooker. But during the period of decline, there exhibits a sense of nihilism, pathos, disorder, and the complete abandonment of pure beauty and the logos that defines it. In contemplating Western modern art as a component of the final phase of civilization, one can make several critical observations on what modern art is attempting to do, how it does this, and who the main purveyors of it are. The modern art, which is allowed for public consumption at present, is either politically subversive or culturally subversive. Neither contains elements of transcendent beauty, which momentarily allows the soul of the viewer to interface with the greater spiritual realm, thereby raising the moral consciousness while organizing its understanding of what is healthy or unhealthy. Politically subversive art specifically attacks institutions or civic ideas that have separated and therefore elevated Western culture above others. Culturally subversive art generally undermines the philosophical system of an entire group, in particular its beliefs, customs, and values. In this case, modern Western art is designed to deconstruct, destabilize, then destroy the historical narrative, beauty, aspirations, and spiritual identity of ethnic Europeans. Both categories can be defined in simple terms. They are agitprop. The artists are almost exclusively neo-Marxist, left-leaning, and anti-Western. They implement antithetical elements intended to disrupt the sense of awe, self-recognition, a reverence for higher beauty, or a constructive motif that builds upon Western traditions. In fact, everything conveyed intends to do the opposite. More importantly, a moral vacuum is opened up to the viewer where all things become meaningless. This is how Western art has been weaponized against its very own people. So, how is it different at present than, let's say, the late Roman period? Aesthetically, modern art over the past 100 years has quickly devolved into a strange mix of the hyperreal with the utterly devoid of content. This suggests that the promoters of the new art are insinuating that the collective psyche of Western culture is disassociative and no longer having a center. In other words, they're coercing us to believe that we are schizophrenic. This, of course, is a ruse, but many believe it. And such art has now recently moved into advertising, whereas a decade ago, it was still only viewed in art houses. However, it is the subliminal cultural and political references in the modern art push today that act most concretely upon the minds of Western people. These can be reduced to a half dozen themes which are consistently driven into the collective psyche. They are, Western values are destructive, Western concepts of beauty are oppressive and colonial, Western self-preservation as an artistic form is illegal, Western self-reflection must only conceive in negative terms, and the history of all the above suggests that Western culture, therefore ethnic Europeans themselves, is evil. It is simply politicized anti-art, masquerading as virtuous art, with genocide as its only arbiter. So, who controls the art world, and why are they purveying the subliminal weaponry? Well does one need to spell it out? It is obvious who operates and directs this system of mobile images, and since 1945, they have almost entirely collected all of the classic works of art. By doing so, they now control the narrative. But why have they chosen the medium of art as a weapon? Because the European tradition is art. It has always been our core language, representing our philosophical spirit. And when one has closed the gates to the transcendent, one conquers another soul, their sacred perception, and the psychic architecture of their entire race. It is this loss of spiritual sovereignty that is the greatest infirmity afflicting our people at present, and, if allowed to continue, will exhaust us to death.